Hey YouTube, what's going on? It's Don here from Nowhere Spirit, and today we're going to be installing VPN service in your Raspberry Pi. Now, what VPN stands for, it's Virtual Private Network, and what it does, it actually sounds like the name. It's a virtual private network. Now, this allows um, you to connect to this network virtually and use its services inside that network. For example, uh, if you have a file server at home and you have a VPN at home, you could be connected anywhere around the world to your house and then use that file server. Um, other services would be remote desktop. If you have a remote desktop computer in the same network, you could access, you could join the VPN and then access that remote desktop. All right, then let's get started. To start off, we're going to need to download an operating system for our Raspberry Pi, and I'm going to be using Raspbian, and I'll leave a link in the descriptions below. All you need to do is download the zip file, which I already did. It takes a while, actually. It's, a, it's about a gig. And after that, you're going to need to download another program called Win Dis Win32 Disk Imager. And I'll leave a link in the descriptions below for this also. This is a program that you're going to be using to load the operating system into the SD card so the Raspberry Pi could boot. Okay. Now that you get all the tools and everything, um, I actually saved everything into my desktop. We're going to want to extract it out. The image file then I'm gonna just pre-start my Windows image at 32 so select the drive that you're gonna be loading the operating system into which you should hopefully select your SD card the F, for me it's the F drive open the image file and I know I saved it into my desktop so I'm gonna hit desktop and here it is the next step you have to take is just write it's going to say, hey, everything's going to be deleted. Do you, are you sure you want to continue? So, yes. Just in case you missed the disclaimer, yes, you will lose everything on the SD card. All right, now that everything wrote successfully, you can eject the disk, pop it into your Raspberry Pi, and you can now locate your IP address. I use my method of my router. And with this, I'm able to find the IP that comes up on the network. Okay, the next program you're gonna need to actually connect to a SSH or to connect to Raspberry Pi is PuTTY. So I'm going to leave a link in the descriptions below on where to get PuTTY also. Again, I have it installed. Okay, so um, the IP address is 118. And it will ask you for the first time logging in if you want to accept the security key. Just hit yes. The default password is PI. I mean, the default username is PI. And the password is Raspberry. Oops, I typed it in. Raspberry. Alright, now we're going to have to be doing some command line foo here, so I hope you guys can keep up. It, it's not too hard, you're just going to be updating and installing a program or two. First thing you want to do is sudo apt-get update. This will actually fetch the newer applications from the repository site from Debian. And repository... Um, the repository system from Debian is basically um, a software store or an app store you could say and you can just type in app get install and then if you know the program name you can type it in and it will install that program now that I updated the um, repositories in this um, Raspbian Pi <clears throat> What I need to do next is install our VPN server. Here, I'm going to be doing a sudo, which is super user app get install pptpd. We're going to be using the service pptpd. There are plenty more. There's like OpenVPN and other stuff that you could um, actually install. But uh, in our installation, what we're going to be using is pptpd. TP, D, or PPTP. 
slightly less secure than uh, the OpenVPN, but I find it a little bit easier to work with because a lot of uh, a lot of uh, phones or um, computers are pre-installed and it already supports it. Now, after installing this program, next step we're going to be taking is to configure the PPTP. I'm just going to say VPN from now. It's just so much easier to say. It's tongue twister saying PPTP. I'm trying to say that three times fast. Okay. Super user nano is the text editing program. PPTPD.config. Here, first thing what we're going to want to do is tell its local IP. You can actually uncomment. The line like the line right above but I'm just gonna type it in 192.168.118 which is the IP of the machine that we found earlier it's just basically saying that this is gonna be the main machine for this um, VPN next we're gonna need to sudo nano and we're gonna have to set up some um, PPP options so I'm going to do etc p slash ppp slash pptpd slash options and in here we are actually going to be changing the DSN domain name server to 8.8 oops 8.8.8.8 which is Google server and I don't think I really need to change anything else. I'm just looking through the setup files right now. Here you can set up all the security if you want to use uh, the encryption type, specific encryption type. The more higher the security, the slower the connection will be. Okay. I'm actually going to add MTU one. Oops. One four nine zero. Then MRU one four nine zero. Control X to exit, and it'll ask you if you want to save. So hit Y for yes. Enter, and I'll save that option. And uh, now we're gonna need to forward the internet um, right now if I was to connect to the private network on the VPN all I'm gonna have access to is the local network on that network right okay I'm gonna go with that so if I join the network all I'm gonna be allowed to access right now would be the file servers or the remote desktop and stuff like that the services within the network if I was to type google.com it won't even allow me to go on the web because I'm not forwarding the web through the VPN it's a little confusing but trust me it, it all makes sense in the end if you don't add this next step you won't have internet basically if you connect to a VPN so sudo again everything is in uh, the highest restricted order it's in the super user stuff so that's why I'm always using sudo Cetera, sys config, and here I am looking for IP forward. Ah, right here. Save that, and then we have to allow the firewall to um, forward the uh, or route the traffic now there's a few ways to do this um, I'm gonna do it a slightly easier way you could kind of use the cron tab and the cron tab is basically a service that runs in the window that execute whenever you program it to so if you want to execute a test every five minutes you put in the cron tab um, what we're doing right now is oh, I have to execute a command every time when the computer boots just to make sure that it's gonna forward the traffic or allow the, uh, the uh, allow the traffic to forward so what I'm gonna do is nano 
rc local here right before the exit i'm going to type in this command ip tables dash t nat dash capital a post routing dash o etho zero dash j masquerade and then we can save that control x yes and save just to make sure i'm pretty sure it's etho yep etho zero you can see it right over here you can see my mouse Now that's all said and done, we're going to have to create a user. Here's the unsecure part of, about PPTPs. Um, in Linux, you could actually, it's just a regular text file, and you could write anything you want in there. And if you have access to it, you could actually see what the password and username is. sudo nano, etc. ppp chap secrets. And here, you see how it comments that it says secret authentication for CHAP and it says client server secret IP address. Um, what I'm going to be using is my name, Don, and the server is any server. Then the password would be password and IP address would be anything. So I'm not locked into a specific IP I have to log in from. Exit that, save that sudo service pptpd restart now this will restart my uh, VPN service if there's an error it would pop up saying that something went wrong or a setting didn't work and it'll have an error there but everything went through perfectly fine and that's it we just set up our VPN next step is connecting to our VPN any other windows is very similar right click on your um, network icon open network sharing here you're gonna have something that says set up new connection on the network now on here you want to connect to a VPN or connect to a workplace next use my internet connection yes so you're not using a phone not on, you're not dialing directly and then this is where you're gonna put your IP address and you're gonna to need to find out how to uh, you need to find out your IP address for your um, for your internet and you could go to multiple sites there. Uh, every you could go to any. There's a site that's I think it's like what's my IP, and you can go there and find out what's your IP. Since I'm doing this internally and it's a test, I'm just gonna type um, the 192.168.118 VPN would be Raz VPN create. And here, now once I click on this network, the my uh, wireless network icon or the network icon, you're gonna see a VPN icon come up. On um, Windows 7 and Windows 8, it's very similar. You're gonna see something similar there too. I'm gonna connect, ask me for my username, which is Don, and the password is password. Okay. completing the connection that mean that's a, that's a good sign and I am connected all right now that everything's connected the next step we would have to take is called port forwarding it's something that you would have to do inside your router to allow the traffic from the outside world to your Raspberry Pi with a specific port now PPTP port is 1723 and that's what you need to forward I can't show you how to do it because every router is different and there's so many routers out there um, what I could recommend is a website, which I'll put in the link in the bottom Showing you uh, How to port forward and if it has your guides for your router, you can just follow that guide um, Once everything's done and once everything is all forwarded all you have to do is just connect to your VPN So guys that concludes our little tutorial if you like this video Please hit that like button if you want to see more videos like this hit that little subscribe button on the bottom and again Thanks for the view Thanks for watching my video. Please take a moment to subscribe, it helps me a lot. And if you haven't watched my previous videos, I'll post the link right here.